Well, it's a long story, so I don't think you are really excited about it, but it's my pleasure to be here. So um, my background is in economics and sociology. I'm basically a researcher and a university um, lecturer. I've been teaching child welfare child protection in the last 20, more than 20 years now. And uh, my basic interest was in family sociology. And then when I um, was asked to do a research on uh, babies, infants, in uh, residential homes in Hungary back in the mid 80s, then I was shocked by what I experienced there. And therefore I moved to child protection, child welfare, because I thought that uh, it needs much more exploration and um, in Hungary especially at a time we haven't had any research on these issues. So I, uh, this was uh, my first experience with child protection and obviously I fell in love with child protection and I've been doing it ever since, different areas. We started uh, obviously in Central and Eastern Europe with the, the institutionalization desire and also the introduction of social work in Hungary because previously in the child protection system mostly um, pedagogues were employed. We haven't had any social work education since the late 30s. So we had to reintroduce it in the second half of the 80s. And I was um, one of those um, uh, young researchers and lecturers who were part of the first ever group of reintroducing social work education in, uh, at universities in Hungary. We started with postgraduate courses and then we um, went on with undergraduate and then in the 90s we even adapted we were we were working together with the case western reserve university in cleveland us on our doctoral program now <clears throat> i also went to teach to to do some research in western australia in perth at the perth university in the late 80s 89 and 90 and then I learned uh, much more about the Anglo-Saxon, Australian, American, British child protection, child welfare system. And I took it home after returning back to Hungary. I've started my international career, so to say, um, uh, by working with the International Federation of Social Workers. I used to be a board member, the first ever Eastern European board member for six years there between uh, 94 and 2000 and also I started working with UNICEF on the first money report on the on child protection system in Central and Eastern Europe and um, have been working with them occasionally ever since also then later on with WHO and the Council of Europe in different areas. We also brought to Hungary um, by adapting um, uh, programs from the Netherlands uh, on foster care training. So this was a kind of um, reform going on to deinstitutionalize children by training foster parents and supervisors and later on the, uh, also the institutional care staff. And this started a long journey when we've been um, in touch with many international experts and started vast exchange programs and then as time was flying after a while I um, I was um, the the chair just like today the the association called family child and use where we were putting together the first ever shadow report for the UNCRC committee in 2005 and then I was representing the Hungarian NGOs in Geneva that's how I learned about the committee's work for the first time. And then I was approached in 2007 and I was elected as a member of the, of the CRC committee and re-elected uh, last December for another four years. In the meantime, as you know, um, I have become involved from the beginning. We are one of the founding members of Eurochild and started working with Eurochild and then I was elected as president last year. Although in the meantime, I was also working since the accession of the of Hungary from 2004 in the European Economic and Social Committee. I was one of the first civil representatives representing child welfare, child protection and family issues there. 
and I did it for six years and I finished last year. So roughly. And I've been working a lot on research and publishing a lot of books and teaching at different universities. So that's what I'm doing briefly. It's quite obvious that children need extra protection. They are weaker than some other subgroups of the society. And although they, if we are empowering them, then they can be equal partners, but it's a long way. Um, for many people don't see children as equal partners. They see them as children who should have to be disciplined and who have to behave. But uh, obviously um, I'm representing the most vulnerable groups of children, not children in general, although I guess they also need some uh, advocacy still. But there are some very marginalized groups of, the, of, of, of children, like children who are socially excluded, are living in poverty, those who have disabilities, or those who belong to ethnic minorities, refugee, migrant children, so those who need extra protection. And um, I guess everybody who is working on this field feels the pressure, the extreme pressure that we have to do it quicker, because these kids are growing up and we can lose another generation and for every child every day counts because you can't repeat the childhood. So if you miss it then these children are really losing a lot. So we have to back them up. Well actually I guess um, there has been um, a lot achieved however whenever there is a crisis or any conflict situation in any part of the world and children are the first who are suffering. So you can see that, that as soon as the crisis arrived, uh, the budget cuts first obviously went to social expenditure, education, culture, meaning that those children who are suffering for many different reasons are immediately losing um, a lot of resources and not only them, but sadly enough it's also the the service providers who are protecting them, you can see that those professionals who are working with children are not very well paid, their prestige is not very high, their education is not sufficient, they don't get enough support and supervision, meaning that they cannot uh, um, protect properly in many instances children. On the other hand, the most obvious sign is that parents don't get enough support, so they can't take good enough care of their children. And this is a very, very, very striking um, 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 thing for the time being. I also see that the children are not voters, so they are not so important. Not even their parents are very excited uh, in many instances about politics. So therefore they are not a very strong uh, advocacy group. So that's why we have to back them up more strongly than, than um, some others. I guess the awareness about children's rights is there and obviously more and more knowledge is around um, about the importance of childhood and especially early childhood. So people seem to learn, even politicians uh, sometimes understand, that early childhood is the, the most essential um, uh, period of, of time in a, in a child's life from the perspective of starting strong as the OECD report title says, because we know more and more about the de brain development and the importance of early uh, cognitive and emotional stimulation of children. If children in their first years of life get what they need to thrive, then obviously the later years are much more successful. And interestingly enough, until recently, all the focus went on the school years or teenage years or so the later years and I'm really happy that Europe discovered early childhood as um, the uh, core period of time. Uh, we also have to uh, do, be aware of the fact that this uh, didn't start uh, because of children, it started because of the needs of the labour market 